in the middle C, we got LR Smith on your right. He's actually brought a really sweet deck to the room. Matt, uh, it's the green red Glorbinger Precon. Yeah, we've got a challenger deck from LR here. And that kills him with the Archfiend of the Draw, straight in for four, and Jesse Clevenger takes it down the hard way. Magic the Gathering, a children's card game that started in 1993, has become an international phenomenon. At its peak are some of the highest level of players that have garnered a sizable following. As someone who wants a larger following for myself, I know if I want to shoot to the top, I need to take down a large tournament. And Christian Calcano will extend the hand. Jake Beardsley is your pro tour, the Lord of the Rings champion. Thankfully for me, Wizards of the Coast, the company that creates Magic the Gathering, has the product just for me to do this with, the Challenger Decks. Starter decks and theme decks of the past have been well known as a good place to learn the game, but doesn't really have the well curated cards to compete at high levels. However, with the Challenger decks, Wizards of the Coast states that it's perfect for players of all levels. To confirm on how powerful the decks can be, longtime professional Magic the Gathering player Tandy confirmed this would be my path to victory. I and I want to know your opinion on how how you think this might go as a prediction. Taking a Pioneer Challenger pre-build for Magic through the tournament how do you think that's gonna run uh, so <laughs> uh i love the like ramp into big dragons deck and mm -hmm. th those pre-constructed decks are pretty good they really juiced them up a couple years ago when they made those yeah if it's got eight elves and glory bringer you can't lose i think you're gonna do well <laughs> so now endorsed by a professional magic player and my confidence skyrocketed in the challenger decks i headed out to my local store to pick one up stop stopping i'm hard to keep you in frame All right, let's rip this thing open. Pioneer Challenger deck, gruel. Try to get that money shot. Not very good money shot. You've got a crush. Apparently these things are fortune cookies. Okay, so the deck box that comes in is just paper. And then we have our cards. It came with tokens. So that's our sideboard, I'm assuming. I don't know what's good in Pioneer. So I'm assuming this is probably going to be interesting as a deck. But we got this Glorybringer paper. This is $50, by the way. Let's just go over the, the deck itself. So on the back of the box, subtlety is not your strong suit. Drop a mana dork early on and deploy massive threats ahead of schedule. The dragons and beasts will take it from there. So we're like a ramp dragon deck that somehow makes human tokens. And these are supposedly tournament ready. Well, we have two questing beasts right out of the gate. Hold on. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, there we go. Two questing beasts, two Chandra torture defiance, which is kind of funny because I actually have like four of these already. Four bone crusher giants. That's actually really good. It's a good card. Four of them. Four glory bringers. So Adam would be happy. Love struck beasts. We have four of those. Four scavenging oozes. Then we have some pain lands. A stomping ground? They have the shock lands in here? Okay. Rock veil. Four rock veils. Mizzy and Mortars. Three Abrades. Three Land War Elves. Three Elvish Mystics. Nothing crazy. And then we're back to the forest. I'm not going to lie. These are, this is actually a little bit more stacked than I was in, like anticipating. I like how we're three Abrades in the main deck. Is braid even like a... Is that like a Pioneer card? I don't know what is in Pioneer. So, But the oozes, 
the Love Struck Beasts, the Glory Bringers, Bone Crusher Giant, Chandra's, and Questing Beasts. That's pretty cool. All right, let's look at this. Uh, let's look at this sideboard they prepared for us. A Cinder Vines on top is kind of cool. Not gonna lie, Cinder Vines is kind of a good card. Where are we at? Over here. Two Cinder. Four Cinder Vines. Three Shifting Ceratops, three Rendering Volleys, an additional Abraid, and four Flame Blessed Bolts. And let's see what our tokens is for good measure. I didn't see anything that makes a human token, so we have five human tokens, a double face card slots, and that's it. Alright, that's it. After being surprised by some of the cards in the pre-con, I was starting to feel a little better about my challenge, even though I've never really played Pioneer before. But I knew if I really wanted an edge over the other players, I know that I would have to get in their head early into the game to kind of throw them off their groove by intimidation. My mastermind playset that I won after beating a small child in the finals of a game day should convince my opponent that I'm a highly skilled player that should cause them to get nervous and potentially overthink their plays leading to misplays that will boost my chances to win with this pre-con deck. With everything packed and ready to go, we headed out for Codwell, Ohio to Apex Gaming for the big tournament. As we drove, I kept feeling like the deck would underperform, and considering most of my self-worth is based on winning children's card games, I decided to stop at the Big Muskie Bucket for some inspiration. The Big Muskie was an excavator that operated in Ohio from 1969 to 1991, and during its time moved more earth than double the size of the Panama Canal. Seeing how large the bucket was and thinking about the long, grueling work days these miners endured made me feel like if they could literally move mountains worth, then I should be able to grab some wins at this tournament. With my confidence at an all-time high, we finally arrived at Apex Gaming for the Pioneer Tournament. Hello and welcome to the Apex Gaming $2,000 Pioneer Open. I'm Tandy, joined by Bo Matt. Say hi, Bo Matt. Hi, Bo Matt. Before our first round, we had our player meeting going over how the tournament will proceed, the rules of the tournament, and how to call over a judge, after which I was informed that I would be in the feature match area. My stomach sank at hearing this because on camera, I wouldn't be able to use my mastermind play mat, which I felt might put me at a bit of a disadvantage. Ah, I see. Languish. Wah, wah. After losing 0-2 on camera, I was overcame with a great sense of failure and shame that I had brought onto my family. And with my confidence rocked, I headed into round 2 very leery about my deck. Round 2 ended in yet another defeat. At this point, putting me close to the bottom of the leaderboards and almost ensuring that I would not make it to the top 8. Feeling lied to by Tandy after his glowing endorsement. Yeah, if it's got 8 L's in Glorybringer, you can't lose. Can't lose. Can't lose. Can't lose. Can't lose. Yeah, if it's got 8 L's in Glorybringer, you can't lose. My confidence was at an all-time low, and I needed this win. Typically, an X and 3 means you're out of it altogether, and most people drop from the tournament, but as I set and the round started, my opponent was nowhere to be found. I was informed that if my opponent doesn't show up within a minute, that it would be a game loss, and if they don't show up within 10 minutes, it would be a disqualification, which means I would get a match win. With that information, it was a race against the clock as I waited for my opponent to show. And after the grueling 10 minute wait, my opponent never showed, leading to a match victory for me. The challenger deck is finally on the board.
Reinvigorated and ready to go, I headed into round four with some restored confidence as I technically had a win under my belt. Round four, I played against Rakdos Sacrifice and was able to take a match win the old hard way by just casting Glory Bringers, which did make my opponent muddle underneath their breath. They hate magic. It's worth noting that at this point, I've won every game I've casted Glory Bringer. Feeling unstoppable, I headed into round five where I was put to a stop. I played against Mono Green Devotion, which is my first exposure to this deck, and it is insanely powerful. I felt like there wasn't really a way for this deck to compete against it. I headed into round 6 with a 2-3 record, and while the games were very close, my opponent was able to get their combo in the end of game 3, leading to a 2-4 record heading into the last round. At this point, I felt like a complete loser. I have been crushed and lingering at the bottom of the leaderboards. Feeling devastated and hopeless, I started to remember the big musky bucket and thought that if the miners could literally change the world, then I could pull this together. I could walk out with a slightly respectable 3-4 record with a pre-con challenger deck. After all, to quote a dear friend of mine, if you can't win, you can make somebody else lose. When the pairings went live for round 7, there it was. I got hit with the bye. We have done it. A 3-4 record to finish the day off. It was a long and grueling 7-round tournament into uncharted waters for me and the challenger deck, but to go home with a 3-4 finish, I felt accomplished. Sure, the challenger deck isn't hyper competitive, and I probably wouldn't do this again, but I do think it's a good starting point for someone wanting to get into the game. And with the price point, you actually get something that is slightly playable. I do want to thank Apex Gaming and Tandy for having me out. I had a ton of fun and met a lot of really cool people. And at the end of the day, this is a game. It's about having fun, and I'll take that 3 4 record with me any day. And who knows? Maybe the next time I walk through those doors, I'll take down the whole thing.